Hi, everybody. It's me, Travis McElroy of the internet. I hope everyone is well. Uh, we're hopefully going to do a stream now um, because now my eldest, BB, is hopefully napping. But Teresa is on dot duty and I'm on BB duty. So if her monitor starts making a lot of noise, we might have to call this one. Uh, so what we're going to do is we, uh, I'm going to show you uh, a step-by-step -step process of creating a character for 5th edition, uh, edition's Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, and I will kind of tell you my process. And we're going to be doing pretty simple, the one sheet character sheet here. Um, now, many of you have probably played Dungeons or Dragons, but have you ever played both? That's where it gets a little complicated. Um, so we're going to be doing a pretty straightforward one sheet build. Um, now, if you uh, don't have a player's handbook like this and you're not quite ready to make the leap into like buying all the different pieces you need, I highly recommend D&D &D Beyond, uh, a website that you can step-by-step -step build a character there, see how you get a feel for it, maybe and like play your first uh, session of D and D using just D and D Beyond, but I would suggest before you get too far down the rabbit hole, making sure that you do pick up the player's handbook. Because here's the thing about this book that I've realized over years and years of playing is that uh, there is rules and skills and stuff in the flavor text and in the margin, like. Basically, it's really easy to like read through the book and just hit like the big points and be like, oh, okay, I know everything about my character. Uh, and then years later, I realized like, oh, I could have been doing this thing this whole time and I never realized it. So first things first, let's talk about building a character versus playing a character. So for me, I like to build the character first. Um, well, okay, it depends. Because sometimes if I have no ideas in mind, I will build a character first and then based off of their character traits, decide what kind of like what their characterization is, I guess is the best way to put it. And then sometimes I will have a like character that I want to play in mind. And so I will build the character around their characterization. So... um the number one thing, here's the only way, this is how I am, quote unquote, good at D&D, &D, is to know the character you want to play, build the character you want to play, and play to that character's strengths. Um, it's the reason why, after a while, Magnus seemed fairly unstoppable in battle. It's not because I was, you know, cheating, though some might say I was. I stopped that early on. Uh, it is because I only did things he was good at. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't have Magnus making Arcana checks. I didn't have Magnus doing healing checks, right? I had Magnus doing strength checks and acrobatics checks and that kind of thing. So let's talk about, and I'll angle you down here. Whoop. Let's look at the character sheets, shall we? Now, as you can see here on the character sheet, and I don't know, maybe this is backwards for you all. But we have, you know, their name, uh, race, uh, their class. You have all these abilities down the sides here. You have all these abilities that you can do within those. All of these things, right? So when I talk about building a character and knowing how you want to play it, what I mean is, like, if you want to build a character who, like Magnus, rushes in, um, you should make sure you build your character with lots of constitution, right? You should play like a barbarian or a fighter or, or whatever. Because here's the thing, is it fun to play against type? Yes, of course it is. You could build a, uh, you know, a rogue who rushes into battle. You could build a barbarian who tries to be sneaky. You could do all these things, right? But that's fun for like a one-off and it gives you something to push against. But... It, it will get frustrating over the long period of time because eventually 
the things that your character would bring to the party, you are not going to be good at, right? And so I think that, especially for a first time build or even just a like second or third time, focusing on your character's role uh, and what you want to do um, is is the best way to start. Now, here's here's in the book, right? And there's my well loved copy, as you can tell by this piece that just comes out. But uh, I think it comes out like right, yeah, it comes out right on the warrior page or the fighter page. You can tell I spent a lot of time working on Magnus. But in the step by step creation, it has here choose a race. Ooh, let me scoot it up. Choose a race. I, not to speak ill of, of Dungeons & Dragons, I think that's wrong. Um, because I actually think the first thing you should do is choose a class. Because then choosing a race, I think, feeds into that more. For example, if you want to be a rogue, right? Oh, it, it's super fun to play like a rogue halfling or uh you know a rogue tabaxi right if you want to play uh a wizard because the thing is is that different races in D, D have different ability score modifiers and so that way you can like kind of tailor who your character is based off of their role on the party so let's look at some of the characters shall we or some of the races rather so when we look at races uh, in in D and D, you have the dwarf, right? Now dwarves uh, are are strong uh, and a little sneaky. So you could have a dwarf rogue, a dwarf fighter, uh, any of these things, and that's a pretty good choice. Now elf, elf, uh, elf ranger, uh, elves are good for wizards and sorcerers and magical things. You can play an elf rogue. It wouldn't be my first choice, but you definitely could. And I'm just talking basic. This is basic handbook stuff. As you get into, there are plenty of other books where this expands out like other uh, races and stuff. And you also get the variations like dark elf, high elf, wood elf, uh, halfling. Halfling bards are definitely fun. Uh, halfling rogues, I think, are especially fun. I think that's maybe one of the most common rogue builds I've seen is like rogue halflings now human the thing about human is that they are kind of okay at every race or at every class i should say because with the human in the basic human build you get like a plus one to every ability score so you're not especially good at anything but you're also not bad at anything um you also get into the dragonborn dragonborn make uh for you know great uh, uh uh like fighters and barbarians but they're also not terrible as like wizards and magicians gnomes once again fun rangers fun rogues um and then half elf where you get a little bit of the benefits of elf a little bit of the benefits of human uh half orc same benefits of orc benefits of human the tiefling, tiefling are especially good as like wizards and magicians and warriors and that kind of thing. So let's pick, I am thinking what I want to play because I haven't built a ranger before. Oh, but my microphone. I think I'm going to play a ranger. And I think as a ranger, I'm going to do a half elf. Yeah, I think I'm going to do a half elf ranger. Now I'm also going to, because I'm still learning, I'm going to have D&D Beyond pulled up next to me. Now on D&D Beyond, you can do a standard creation, a quick build or randomize. I'm going to do a standard uh, and I'll name the character later. Uh, we will do a half elf. Um, and the nice thing about on D&D Beyond is that they will specifically let you know if you are forgetting to do anything. So with the half elf, you get uh, ability score increases. So I'm going to raise my, I want to say for a ranger, it's dexterity and maybe constitution or key. I'll find out when we get to it. Um, 
and I get to choose a skill versatility to gain proficiency in two skills, I'm going to gain, uh, well, I want to, investigation will be a good one, and nature. Those are good uh, skills for a ranger. And then I get to pick a language. Now, picking a language is always fun. You're going to get to watch my hands move now. Oh, is wisdom the other one? Is it, ha, uh, is it, uh, is a ranger a dex and wisdom? Okay, thank you. Dex and wisdom. This is another reason why Google is a great resource because you can Google it. Um, so when you're choosing, here, I'll take you back up so you can see my face. Here. When choosing a language, this is where it's fun to know what the other members of your party are going to be. Um, so like, if you know that there is going to be a like Dragonborn, right? Being able to speak Draconic might give you a moment where you can speak privately to a teammate, right? Or if there's a dwarf, or if you're going to be exploring mines or whatever, and then you can speak Dwarven. Um, so I can, uh, as a half elf, already speak common and elvish, and I'm going to add to it. Uh, I mean, Dwarvish is probably the most common you're going to run into. Um, there's Goblin, Minotaur, uh, Sylvan primordial orc i'm gonna go with dwarvish uh because i think that that's probably the one i'm most likely to run into most uh okay so now that we've done that it's time to pick our class so let's talk about classes uh I don't know about y'all but i've been listening to a lot of disney music my three-year-old this week okay so let's take a look at classes, shall we? Whoop. No, this way. Okay, so if we're looking at classes, we have a lot to choose from. Barbarian. Now, we're going to talk about it a couple times in here, right? But a lot of these, uh, a lot of these will overlap with other classes. You'll notice there's barbarian and fighter and paladin, right? And so the difference is, I think that's where the character creation lies. So with a barbarian, right, you get a lot more of, uh, I, you know, can take a lot of damage. I'm a little bit more brash. I'm maybe a little more violent, uh, all of these things, right? Whereas with a fighter, it might be you're a little more finesse. Maybe you've been skilled and where did you learn how to fight? And with the paladin, you're like a fighter, but with this like kind of holy side to it. And that's where I think uh, you get into, oh, I, I, I'm i going to, uh, here's where my character comes from. Here's why they follow this path. And there you go. Um, so then we have, so like I guess that barbarian, bard. Here's the thing. People will poo poo a bard. I think bards are super fun. I think bards are versatile um, and always fun to play. Uh, I have yet to play one in one of our Adventure Zone campaigns, but I enjoy them. I think that they are uh, very, very fun. Uh, I think they are fun wrenches to throw into stories sometimes. And I just like playing a performer, you know? Um, let's see. What else are we looking at here? We got clerics. So a cleric, uh, you know, if you've listened to the Adventure Zone, uh, then you probably don't know what a cleric is. Ha <laughs> ha, zing. Uh, a cleric is a healer um, and also has some warrior strengths, right, to them. Uh, and then we've got, do, 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 turning the pages, uh, the druid. The druid, just think like very earthy nature-based magic. A lot of animal stuff, a lot of plant stuff. Uh, very fun, in my opinion. And then the love of my life, the fighter. Uh, so the fighter is not necessarily the most interesting uh, of, of characters to play in battle, right? Because as it says right here, they are well-rounded. So I ran into this a lot playing in the Adventure Zone balance, where it's like, well, my party members are like flinging magic around, and here I am fighting. Uh, I can swing my weapon. But if you get a good DM, you'll get one, really cool weapons, two, lots of settings where you can do 
uh, like strength stuff and acrobatic stuff to aid yourself in battle. Uh, and I find that if you are playing as a fighter and you aren't getting those things, you should talk to your DM. Talk to your DM and find out if it's right for you and say like, hey, could we do some more, you know, acrobatics -y things so I feel like I have a place in it. Um, but then eventually you also will become just an absolute devastation machine because as you level up as a fighter, you get to do like massive, master, massive, like, uh, like multiple attacks and everything. And also you get into martial archetypes where you like can do like battle master and all these different kinds of fighting. So, uh, then there's the monk. Uh, which once again, another form of fighting, but this is like hand-to-hand -hand specialty and you get key points as a monk where you can do basically like battle magic. And this is one of the big differences between fifth edition and fourth edition is like in fourth edition, everyone basically had battle magic where like if you are a fighter or a warrior, you could like do cleave and do sunder and like these moves that like basically were like casting battle spells. Um, and they they took that away and at first i was frustrated by that in fifth edition but i actually like it a lot better because it makes the uh makes the classes feel a little more specialized and makes you think a little bit more during battle now paladin this is where we get into oh no i dropped my phone uh paladin is where we get into kind of a holy knight right where you do have some holy magic you're not as specialized in fighting as the fighter you are still good you are still a tank right because you basically you have um tank uh you have like for lack of a better word thief right or uh you know sneaker uh healer magic right so that that i would say is like your traditional four characters for a four character party and i would say probably fifth if you have uh five players your fifth are probably some kind of support uh like you know a druid somebody who can buff that kind of thing or a bard that can buff um and i think that if you are playing like we did in balance with a three person party you're looking at some kind of tank some kind of caster and some kind of healer um now a paladin uh is a fairly good balance of like caster and fighter but more uh focus on fighter in my opinion um and then we get into ranger so ranger is like a fighter but it's a distance fighter right they're not getting up in the mix they are a lot more about distance fighting and that kind of thing they can still do it but they are not as much, they are not a tank. Let's put it that way. I would count them in more of like the support class. That that said, they can be, you know, a fighter for sure. They can do damage, um, but they are not. They I, I would put them, honestly, probably more in the sneak area, like a ranger and a rogue. Now, rogues are usually my favorite characters to play, so much so that I have yet to play one in the Adventure Zone. Uh, because I play them so much in my real life. Anytime I play any kind of RPG, like video game, I build a rogue every time. Because um, the thing about rogue that's fun to play is it's right there in the build. Like because the way the rogue is built, it's fun to play it um, because you get like these special skills and be sneaky and a lot of character work will be built into you because when you think, ah, a rogue, right you will kind of know like i'm going to be sneaky i'm going to be a little shady i'm going to be a little untrustworthy so now you get into sorcerer um sorcerer let's see how can i put it i have to think in terms of like um um uh, of the dresden files right but i think as a sorcerer and this is where i'm going to start speaking a little bit out of my ass because i uh, haven't really played a lot of casters. Um, Sorcerer, I think, is more like evocation and like I'm like I'm gonna blow shit up. Uh, where a wizard, you get into a little bit more of like transmutation and enchantment. Um, that's and a warlock is a lot more like mind control and spooky. That's my understanding of it. Tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, and then we have the wizard, you know, like Taco from TV. 
Uh, and I think that's our classes. Yep, that's our classes. So I'm going to go with a ranger. So let me go over here to D&D Beyond. I would point this at this, my computer screen, but I'm pretty sure that would be a huge mistake. So I'm going to play as... Whoop, now, as a ranger here on D&D Beyond, I get proficiencies. Uh, I'm going to be proficient at perception. Always good when you're sneaking through the woods. Uh, stealth. Always go when you're sneaking through the woods. I am going to build this rogue, I think, like I am. Or sorry, I even just said it. I'm going to build this ranger like I was filling the rogue portion of a party. Um, I'm going to assume in this party that there is a warrior or a paladin or something like that. So I'm going to focus more on uh, the sneakiness. Now, this is where you get into like character creation. One of the things that I can choose a proficiency in is insight. And insight is like, is this person lying to me? But in my mind, I've been a ranger in the woods a lot. I haven't spent a lot of time with other people. So I, I don't know if people are. Maybe I'm not good at reading people. So instead, I'm going to go with animal handling and say that my ranger is more comfortable with animals than they are with people. Uh, and in making that decision right now, I have informed myself that is a character trait of, of this ranger, more comfortable with animals than with people. So then I look at favored enemy. So I get a favored enemy uh, with the ranger. And uh, this means that uh, beginning at first level, you have significant experience studying, tracking, hunting, and even talking to a certain type of enemy. Choose a type of favorite enemy, all that. Uh, you have advantage on wisdom checks to track your favorite enemy, as well as a, an intelligence checks to recall information about them. Um, so I'm going to go with... Uh, well, I'm going to say beast, right? Because I talked about like I've been in the woods. Maybe like I am an animal tracker. Uh, you know, maybe that's how I've made my living is by like tracking certain animals and like, I don't know, capturing them and domesticating them. I don't know that I'd really hunt and kill. Uh, and I get to choose another language. So let's say I've been in the woods. Uh, so let's say I picked up, uh, do, 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 do. I'm going to say I picked up Goblin because that's fun. And I get Natural Explorer. Uh, you are particularly familiar with one type of natural environment and are adept at traveling and surviving in such reason, regions. Choose one type of favorite terrain. Uh, when you make an intelligence or wisdom check related to your favorite terrain, the proficiency bonus is doubled if you are using a skill that you're proficient in. So, sick uh i'm going to say forest because like i've been talking about this is you know been in the forest so and i'm also it should be clear building this character as a level one uh it is very important when you go into when you start a campaign talk to your dm and figure out what level you all should be at because like if you are starting a character as level one this is like assuming that this is like the first adventure they've ever been on as a party. So very rarely have I ever like really started there. I did it. I started that with Adventure Zone graduation because I wanted them to feel like students who were learning and starting to learn, right? But if I'm saying that this ranger has, um, you know, been doing this a while and has seen some stuff, then maybe I would start them at like a third or fifth level, right? Um, so that they feel a little more experienced as a character. But for right now, for this example, I'm going to do this uh, as, as a uh, level one. So now we get into ability scores. So when you are setting your ability scores, here's the thing to keep in mind. So see here on the side, I want to hold this up, right? You have strength, you have dexterity, you have constitution, you have intelligence, wisdom, charisma. Now, if you need a handy dandy guide to what those kinds of things entail, you can just look down here, down your skills, 
and get a pretty good idea of them. Now, strength is probably pretty straightforward, right? When uh, an improved strength will increase things like your athletics, uh, your strength checks. So there are a ton of skills that have to do with strength because I think strength is such a straightforward one that it's like, I'm going to pick up that heavy box. Okay, obviously that's a strength check. Or I'm going to arm wrestle that orc, right? That's a strength check. Um, and so they break down the other ones a little bit more. Dex, you get into like acrobatics, anything having to do with like reflexes, sleight of hand, stealth, that kind of thing. Constitution, this is when it's like you're trying to resist poison or resist being knocked out or anything like that. So I think the ones that you most need to look at is intelligence and wisdom, because those two things can seem the same, but um, intelligence is like stuff you have learned and wisdom is stuff you understand, if that makes any sense. So like uh, history checks are intelligence insight checks are wisdom so like history check is what have you learned about history where an insight check would be you're looking at this person and you're understanding what they're saying so if you like yes i i stick with it intelligence is what you have learned and wisdom is your ability to understand if that makes any sense and then when you get into charisma of course charisma is like like ability your ability to talk your way into places make people like you all of that stuff. Um, and so when you are looking at these, this is where a lot of character building, not just like the mechanical, but I mean like knowing how to play them and what kind of person they are comes into play. So when you are picking your ability scores, there's a couple ways you can do it. The manual method, I will show you now. The manual method is you would roll either four D6s, which is just a standard D6 die, right? Six-sided die. You would roll four of those like so. Here I have a variety. You will see. Oop, scooted the wrong way. Okay, so I would roll these six, uh, four die, right? I got pretty good, y'all. Uh, six, six, five, and five. I would remove the lowest one. And right now that's a 17. So I would write down that I have a 17 to use, right? And then I do it again. And now here I have a 12, not terrible, not the worst. And, oh, this one's not as good. That's just a 10. This is, let's see, uh, six, nine. Whew. This is an 11. And, thir oh, hold on, 11, 14. Wait, no, 16. Right, so then I have these six scores to play with. And then I would slot them in to these six spots, right? I know the difference between dice and die. I just don't care. Um, and so then I would plug those in down here. The other method is that there is a standard set. Um, I'm trying to remember now what it is. Oh, they. so you would take 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8 and apply those. I don't like that method uh, because I think it's a little too evenly spread out. See, I like this because right here, right? I have the difference between 17 and nine. So when I'm making the decision over here, of course I put 17 in Dex because that's the most important ranger ability. But then it's like, oh, where do I put nine, right? And so maybe I would say, well, he's been in the woods a lot. He hasn't had a lot of time with other people. I'm going to pop that nine right into charisma, right? Or maybe I would say uh, he, you know, isn't very hale and hearty. So he's got a nine in concert. I probably wouldn't do that, right? Because I, I, <laughs> my opinion, uh, unless I, I think there are probably some casters you could get away with putting a low constitution, 
But if you're playing someone who is likely to take damage, your constitution should probably be a little higher. Now, the other method, there is a third method, which within um, D&D Beyond and probably some other character ones, you can do point buy, which is basically you would start uh, with every ability score at eight, and then it gives you 27 points to buy into. Um, so then you can kind of mess with it yourself. I'm going to stick with these that I rolled because I think that's a fairly good spread. So I'm going to put my highest in decks. Um, now I've seen different things. I've seen people write the number in the little bubble and the pluses and minuses up here. And I've seen the number there and the pluses and minuses there. <laughs> now here's the only thing. This is the one reason I do like the point buy method is when you're looking at these, right? Anything above 10. So when I've got this 16, right? When you look at that, you take the number amount above 10 and divide by two. And that's what the score plus is, right? So I'm going to put 16 in wisdom. Uh, put Let's put a 16 in wisdom. And so that's going to put a plus three in wisdom. But here's the thing, it rounds down. So I'm gonna put that 17 in dex, right? And divide that by two and it's three and a half. And so that's still only a plus three in dex. So when you're doing the point by, you can say, oh, okay, well, I'm just gonna go for even numbers and everything. Um, and not worry about it. That said, as you play, you get ability score modifiers, you get things added to your character, all of this stuff, so you can do them there. Now, what I'm going to do is ignore what I've written down here. I am going to plug them in to uh, the the builder here in d and Beyond because you get pluses, pluses to different things because, as you see, well, you can't see. Let me see if you can see. Nope, that's terrible. And you get a racial bonus uh, to uh, dexterity as a half elf plus one. So when I put that 17 in there, it will become an 18, right? So this is why, you know, it usually bounces out. So here, I'll put that 17 in. And now what I've got is an 18, which makes my modifier plus four. And then I put wisdom in... 16 and that makes my wisdom uh plus three but my total still is a 17 there so now i have to make decisions about strength constitution intelligence and charisma i've got that nine there huh and at 12 11 10 i'm gonna put huh do i have any other oh so in charisma i have a racial bonus of two so you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put that nine down there and say that I haven't spent a lot of time out and about in the world. So my people skills, not that great. I'm not as good at it as I could be. That, and that's going to put that actually at an 11. So I don't have any minuses, but I don't have any pluses either. So this is just my charisma score is plus zero. My wisdom is plus three because I have a racial bonus, but this is actually now 17. And this is 18, which makes this a plus four. So now I still have that 12 and that 10 left. I'm going to put uh, the 12, 10, and the 11, excuse me. I'm going to put the, ugh, I always feel like people are always willing to put the lowest one in intelligence. But I am going to go the other way and say, you know, uh, maybe my dude is pretty live and uh, has skipped a lot of workout days and their strength is a 10. And their constitution is an 11 and their intelligence is a 12. Yeah, I don't hate that. Constitution, 11. Wisdom, 12. So that means that intelli or intelligence is the only one that adds a bonus there. Strength, 10. 
zero, zero. So now that I have those, this is where uh, we start to figure out character details. Um, and you could also, as you do this, once you fill those in, uh, well, wait on these, right? Because you're going to have, see these little bubbles to the side there? Those little bubbles denote proficiency, right? So there will be certain skills that your care and saving throws that your character is proficient in. We'll get to those in a second. Misty, did I miss that? No. Okay. We're great. We're great. Um, so in uh in DD, you can choose a background. I am going to let's see. There's a lot of different options like acolytes. Anthropologist, archaeologist, uh, celebrity, uh, or celebrity adventurous scion, excuse me, charlatan. I always like charlatan. I like doing that. Cloistered scholar, courtier, criminal, uh, entertainer, faceless, fisher, folk hero, which is what Magnus was, hermit. Uh, yeah, you know, I've already been doing the like, he hasn't spent a lot of time around people. I'm going to go with Hermit. Uh, another language he's proficient in, let's say, Giant. That's fun. Uh, and so now I pick up things like Discovery. And then if you look at it, there's also a list here of suggested characteristics that include personality traits. These are good starting off points. They include uh, ideals, personality traits. This is where I got uh, Magnus uh, thinking is for other people. I prefer action was one of Magnus's like defining things, but you can also pick up flaws, uh, bonds, all this stuff. Um, you can also here pick out character, uh, physical characteristics, character details, personal characteristics, and like any notes you want to have. So then next comes uh, equipment. And so with equipment, this is another point where it's really, here, I'll point you up so you don't have to just look at my hands. Uh, and equipment is another place where it's really important um, to talk to your DM, right? Of like, how much money am I starting out with? Um, what, because this is where you could, like the game, like, you know, Munchkin, min-max yourself all the hell and say like, I've got a magical sword that lets me cut through any lock or whatever. And that's no fun. So talk talk to your DM and find out what's right for you. Uh, so let's take a look at my character sheet. I will print it off and we can look at it together. How's that sound? Do do do. Oh, my hit points not great. <laughs> That's fine. It's all fine. Everything's great. Here, we'll take a look at it together. One moment. Talk amongst yourselves. Are you talking amongst yourselves? Okay. Whoop. Now, uh, my, my character has no name. It just says Travis McRoy's character. So let's change that. I like the name. I was thinking about this as a great character name the other day. I didn't just come up with this, but I'm going to go with McCormick. As a name. So his name is McCormick. Um, so here's one of the things I really, really like about D&D &D Beyond is as you can see, it has filled in this stuff, but also on the back here, you can see like, my traits and special skills and ranger features and everything. Highly recommend. You can still do it from the book if you if you are uh, old school like that. But I have found whenever I've built one myself, 
without using D&D Beyond, I have without fail missed things. So you can see, ooh, I'm gonna scoot in a little bit here so everyone can look. So you can see, right, I am proficient. I don't know, here, I'll, I'll color it in because I think the little peas are hard to see. Do, do, do. What'd you guys talk about while I was gone? Talk about anything in particular or everybody doing good, huh? What's everyone been up to today? Cool, cool. Okay, so you can see, now the green dots are a little clearer. These are the saving throws that my character is proficient in, in strength and dexterity. And these are the skills that my character is proficient in. Ammo handling. I'm reading these backwards off a screen. Uh, investigation, medicine, nature, perception, religion, stealth, right? So by looking at those things, right, and seeing what my character is good at, I think that this, and pay no attention to like the armor and the attacks are blank because I haven't given myself any, uh, any weapons or armor yet. But when I look at this, right, and I see this, I know that this is going to be a fairly stinky character who uh, is maybe better with animals. And because of the increased nature checks, the increased investigation checks, the fact that forest is like one of their, they're very comfortable in the forest, that if we're out in the woods, this is like a tracker, right? I'm, I'm basically playing a, a tracker. Um, and uh, their stealth is high, plus six for stealth, plus five for medicine. So maybe this is like, I know a lot of like woodsy healing stuff. I know, er and I have an herbalism kit in my bag. So maybe I know like some potions and what leaves will help you and that kind of thing. Um, and my passive perception is 15, which is good. It means it's going to be harder for me to miss things. Um, make sure that that's a thing you keep reminding your DM about. Uh, my initiative is plus four, uh, which is great. And then when I look at the back, I have right here listed uh, favorite enemy, uh, natural explorer. I have dark vision, uh, my fey ancestry means I have advantage on saving throws against being charmed uh, and magic can't put me to sleep. Uh, see, so it's all there. Thank you, D&D &D Beyond. Uh, and there we go. So I've just created a character that I'd be very excited to play. Maybe I will play this someday. Maybe if we do another like fifth edition one-off, I, I I will play this character. We shall see. Um, but yeah, that's that's basics. Like I said, if you go to D D Beyond, it'll walk you through everything I just did. But we just built a character together. Thank you so much for being here. We're gonna be doing more live streams, and we've already done some. Justin did one where he talked about uh he talked about Disney World yesterday. I did one yesterday where I baked some delicious uh, chocolate cherry beer bread using black cherry ale. Uh, I also did one where I taught the basics of blackjack, one where I did a QA. and a uh, And later, maybe right after this, Riley Smurl is going to be doing another live stream, I believe. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and we're going to be doing a lot more because we know that you all are stuck in. And listen, all these live streams are, are banked. They are all saved on our, our YouTube channel. So you can watch there. If you're not, go ahead and subscribe now so you don't miss them. Um, smash that subscribe button. Uh, and tell a friend. You know, we're trying to create more content so nobody gets too stir crazy. And take good care of yourselves. Wash your hands a bunch. Uh, stay inside. Uh, social distancing. All of that. Take good care of yourselves. I think you all are great. Have a great day. And thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'm going to go now. Bye.